And then, if you like, the descent began. It is almost impossible to piece together the exact order of events. We simply have a hadith. There's a very long hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad where the Prophet mentions, on the night that I went on Isra wal Mi'raj, I smelt a fragrance that was very sweet. And so I asked Jibreel, what is this beautiful fragrance? So Jibreel said, this is the fragrance of the one who used to comb the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun and her children. So the Prophet said, I asked Jibreel, what is their story? How come their fragrance is so strong? So Jibreel said, once when she was combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun, the comb fell from her hands and she said, Bismillah. So the daughter said, surely you mean the name of my father because for her daughter's perspective, my father is God. And so this woman said, no. My Lord and your Lord is Allah and the Lord of your father is Allah. And the girl said, do you want me to tell my father you said this? And this woman whose name we don't even know said, yes, go ahead. And so when Fir'aun found out, he called this slave girl and asked her, are you saying you have a Rabb besides me? Because Fir'aun used to say, Ana rabbukum al -a'la. And Fir'aun used to say, as the Quran says, Qala hal alimtu lakum ilahin ghayri. Did I ever teach you there's another God besides me? Because he has to teach his people about God. And this is exactly what he asked this lady as well. She said, yes, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. And so Fir'aun ordered that a cauldron be put a fire and it was boiled in front of her. And she was told that she has to throw her own children into the fire one by one or else acknowledge Fir'aun as her Rabb. She said, I have one request, O Fir'aun. Fir'aun said, what? He said, that you bury me and my children all together. You take all of our flesh and bones and you bury them in one location. So Fir'aun said, this is a condition that we have upon you. And so one by one, her children were thrown in until finally the last one that was left was her baby that was suckling at her bosom. And this was the one that she could not, she paused at. And so the baby spoke to his own mother and said, Oh my mother, go forth and drop yourself in because this punishment of this world is nothing compared to the punishment of the next. And so she threw herself in. And what is amazing is that subhanAllah, we don't even know her name. But the Prophet Sallallahu recorded her plight and narrated it to the Ummah. Her courage and bravery, Allah had willed that it would be preserved for the Ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu also said in Sahih Bukhari, Then I entered into Jannah and there are some versions of the Hadith which says, I saw Jannah and that's different than saying enter Jannah. And I saw in it tents made out of pearls and I saw that the soil of Jannah was made out of musk. The Prophet also said he saw many of the punishments of hell. So in one hadith, the Prophet said, I saw the punishment of the one who stole an orphan's money, that they had noses like that of camels, and they would be eating coals made out of fire, and their mouths would swallow these coals, and it would come out through their anuses. The Prophet said in one hadith that he saw people who had nails of copper, and they were scratching their bodies and their faces with this, and these were the people who used to backbite. The Prophet said, I saw people, they had in front of them pure meat and they had rotten infested meat. And they were eating the rotten and infested meat and avoiding the pure meat. I said to Jibreel, who are these people? And Jibreel said, these are the people that used to fornicate. They would leave the halal, meaning their spouses, and they would go to the haram. In another hadith, the Prophet said that he saw people with such large bellies that they could not stand up. They were on the ground and animals were being brought over them to trample over them as a punishment. And when he asked who they were, Jibreel said, these were the people who would get their money from riba. And uh, the Prophet also said that he saw people who were cutting their own lips and their tongues with uh, scissors of copper and scissors of uh, punishment and fire. He asked Jibreel who these people were. Jibreel said these were the people who used to tell others to do good and they would forget themselves. The Prophet also said, and I saw the Dajjal and one of his eyes was bloated. In another hadith, the Prophet said that I saw the Dajjal and I will tell you something about the Dajjal that no other Prophet has ever told his people and that is that his left eye is like a rotten grape. And the Prophet said, know that the Dajjal is A'war and A'war is one-eyed. 
the Prophet ﷺ came back down to Jerusalem and he then rewrote Buraq. So Buraq is tied up in Jerusalem, right? Remember, Buraq is an animal that is for this world to transport him from Mecca to Jerusalem. As for the transportation from Jerusalem to the heavens, this is what is called Al-Mi'raj. So when he gets back down to Jerusalem, he then rides the Buraq back to Medina. And there are some narrations that are not fully authentic, but there's no problem in them to affirm them as well, that the Prophet ﷺ passed by three caravans of the Quraysh that he recognized. When he came back to Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ went back to sleep, he said, and he woke up in the Haram. And this clearly shows, therefore, that the actual Isra took place from the Haram itself to Bayt al-Maqdis and then back to the Haram. So the Prophet ﷺ said, when I woke up the next morning, I felt an anxiety about how am I going to tell the people of what happened to me? And what will they say? And they are going to reject me. And as I was sitting, anxious and nervous and worried, he's sitting in front of the Kaaba. The enemy of Allah Abu Jahl passed by me and he saw me in that state. And so Abu Jahl said to him in a sarcastic manner, what is the matter with you? Why? Has anything happened? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes, something happened. So Abu Jahl said, what? So the Prophet ﷺ said, yesterday, last night, I was taken from here to Jerusalem. So Abu Jahl was shocked and he said, and you are now here amongst us. You're now waking up amongst us. And so the Prophet himself said, he didn't know whether to make fun of me then or to wait so that I would not retract when he called the other people. The Prophet said, yes, I'm waking up amongst you here. So Abu Jahl said, if I call your people, meaning the Quraysh, will you tell them what you have just told me? And so the Prophet said, yes, I will. And so Abu Jahl began screaming out to the people, Hayya ma'ashara bani Ka'b ibn which is the great grandfather of the Quraysh. Come forth, we have an announcement to make. And so the people came slowly from the places of Mecca. And so Abu Jahl says, tell them what you promised you would tell them. And so the Prophet said, last night I went to Bayt al-Maqdis and I went to pray in the Masjid al-Aqsa, the Bayt al-Maqdis. So the people began reacting in different ways. Some of them began musaffiq, just like clapping like in what is going on here. Others put their hands on their heads, not knowing what to do. And others began snickering and laughing until one of them said, and he had been there to Bayt al-Maqdis. Can you describe it for us? Because everybody knew that the Prophet had never been to Bayt al-Maqdis, right? And so the Prophet said, I began describing the Bayt al-Maqdis until they began to ask me about specifics that I wasn't able to recall. I got confused and I became so worried and anxious that I wasn't able to answer that I had never been so worried before. And he said, as I was waiting for what to respond, I saw in the distance Baytul Maqdis rising up in front of me until I saw it descending beyond the house of Aqil ibn Abi Talib. And this is the house that he grew up in because Abu Talib had died and Aqil is now living in it, right? The house that he grew up in, not the house he's currently living in, that's Khadija's house. And no question they asked of me, except that I saw the Baytul Maqdis, right? Basically being shown to me and I looked at them and I answered every every question that they had until finally one of them said, as for the descriptions of Baytul Maqdis, then of Jerusalem, then he is accurate. The Prophet ﷺ said, and Ibn Hisham mentions this, I will give you some signs as well. And he mentioned the three caravans. He mentioned the first caravan is of so-and-so and they will be returning soon because they were the closest to the city. The second caravan is so-and-so and they had lost a camel and you can ask them about that camel they were searching for. It. The third caravan is such and such and they had this urn of water that I drank from. Abu Jahl said, if you saw them at such and such, a place, the caravan should be coming right now because it was very close to Mecca. And while they're discussing, the news arrives that the caravan is entering Mecca. And so Abu Jahl goes and sees and it is exactly as the Prophet ﷺ described and he comes back and saying, this is clear sorcery. And of course it was at this time when one of the Quraysh came running to Abu Bakr and said, do you know what your companion has just said? Said what? He said, your companion claims to have gone all the way to Jerusalem, which is a month's journey and back, which is another month's journey. And he did all of this in one night. Abu Bakr said, if he said that, then it must be true. So the man said to him, do you believe him in such a claim? And so Abu Bakr said, I believe him in something that is even more amazing than this. He claims that the revelation from above the seven heavens comes to him instantaneously, which is more amazing just to go to Jerusalem and come back or that Allah is communicating with him instantaneously. And so because of this, Abu Bakr was called as Siddiq. If you think about it, in this journey of Isra wal Mi'raj, the Prophet physically saw all of the pillars of Iman. He saw the hijab of Allah and he 
spoke directly with Allah. He saw numerous angels and he saw the angel Jibreel in the original form. He met all of the prophets and he spoke to them. And this is the prophets in the books, right? And he spoke to them about the day of judgment. And he spoke to them about the signs of the day of judgment. And he saw heaven and hell, which are going to take place after the day of judgment. And he even saw the reality of Qadr. How? When the Prophet ﷺ went up and he saw Adam alayhi salam, he actually saw Adam surrounded by many, many people beyond what he could count. And on the right side of Adam was one group, on the left side, another group. And when he saw Adam alayhi salam, saw the people on his right, he was happy. And when he saw the people on the left, he began to cry. So he asked Jibreel about this. And Jibreel said, these are all of the children of Adam. The Ashabu al-Yameen are the people of Jannah. The Ashabu al-Shimal are the people of Jahannam. So when he looks at the people of Jannah, he's happy. And when he looks at the people of Jahannam, he is saddened by seeing Adam with the right and the left and by one more thing, the pen, the writing of the pen, hearing the pen, the Iman of the Prophet after literally seeing with his own eyes all of these pillars of Iman, you understand that this was a personal gift to the Prophet to increase his own Iman.